Hey Sloth Knitters, it's Jana with Pearl Together and welcome back to episode 2 of the Sloth series where we are knitting Hermione's Everyday Socks. Um, it's a pattern from the top or the cuff down as you know and you guys should be done knitting the leg portion now. So in this second episode of this particular knit along we're going to be focused on constructing the heel flap and turning the heel. So. First, I want to preface this particular tutorial by saying I did not follow the pattern because I'm the boss of my own knitting. Now, there's a couple of, I think, valid reasons for, for not doing the heel as written in this pattern. And um, for the sloth series particularly, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> if you look at your pattern with me, when we get to the heel flap, um, sh the author of this pattern has chosen to use the slightly modified garter stitch eyed edged or wait edged eye of the partridge heel pattern okay whatever all that um anyway so it's a separate chart basically for the heel and i didn't want the slothers to be overwhelmed with that um the other thing i kind of don't care for is the outside three stitches of the heel flap she's making into a garter garter stitch edge meaning every row is knitted for those three first three stitches and the last three stitches and so you know while that makes kind of a cool edge that goes down the heel flap it does look kind of neat on the photo if you see what i mean right here it looks kind of cool but it's a pain and here's why i don't like it it starts off each row starts off with a knit stitch okay well that's good and that's easy but I don't care for it for the edge of the heel flap because it doesn't create that nice chain edge that I really prefer for the ease of picking up your gusset stitches later. I really prefer to slip the first stitch and then knit through the back loop of the last stitch of the heel flap. Now, the reason I wanted to do my way for the sloth series is because I can go really slow and I can explain my reasoning for doing it. So I'm diverting from the pattern for that reason. I don't like the edge that it makes and how you don't have a real clear delineated place to pick up your gusset stitches. And you'll see what I mean as we get into this. Um, the rest of it's fine. You know, the eye of partridge is kind of cool. It makes a, a nice texture. But the other thing I wanted to do here um, I promised some people in the last knit along that I would show you how to do the slip stitch heel ribbing. Um, well, it's not ribbing. It kind of looks like ribbing, but the reinforced heel flap, it kind of, when you slip a stitch, it makes columns that are reinforcement. And I wanted you to be able to see that. That's more difficult to see with this particular eye of partridge heel flap. So we're going to do Janet's heel. <laughs> If you don't care to do that, that's fine. You can knit it the way it's written and I will certainly help you with that. I mean, you can ask whatever questions that you want and I'll do my best to answer those questions um, either in the comment section here or in the Facebook group or the Ravelry group. You can certainly knit it the way it's written and I will help you along as best I can. But for the purposes of my tutorial, because I'm the boss of that, <laughs> I'm going to do it the way I want to do it because I think it's easier for my sloth knitters. All right, so carrying on with that, let's get started. Okay, I like to start my heel flap on, I guess, needle number one uh, with my tail right here. And I know that the beginning of the heel flap or the beginning of what will be later on, the sole stitches, is the beginning of my round because my, my cast on tail is here. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. So I'm going to start off as if to knit. And I am, in fact, going to just go ahead and knit this first row across. Not the entire row, just across this first needle or what will be the heel flap so knit your way just knit your way across and we're going to do that first um and then we'll start we'll start the slip stitch pattern after this first heel flap row because the way we begin the heel flap normally is we slip that first stitch i don't like to slip the first stitch at the beginning just because then i'm having to draw this up and i've slipped this first one so it doesn't make there's a potential for a hole there. So I like to do the first row just knitting straight across and then we're going to purl our way back and then we'll begin the heel flap. Now when I knit across, whether I'm doing the slip stitch or not, 
with the right side facing you on the knit side, I'm going, when I get to the last, very last stitch, I'm going to knit through the back loop. And as I explained in a previous sloth video, the reason for that is it makes a very nice edge of your heel flap that makes it easier and more visible for you to pick up your gusset stitches later. So when we get to the last stitch, simply put your, instead of going in as if to knit like normal, you're gonna go into the middle of the loop and knit into the back of it, okay? I'll show you that again, don't worry. Now, normally we would turn our work like this and we continue knitting across the top of the foot or the instep stitches. But instead, now this is the only time you're gonna do this, you're gonna turn your work the other way so that the inside of the sock is facing you. And in, instead of knitting across the front, we're gonna knit across here. The reason we're doing that is we're gonna knit, we're gonna leave the instep stitches alone and we're gonna knit across, back and forth, across the sole stitches or the back of the heel stitches in order to create our rectangle, which will be the heel flap. So now what we're gonna do is slip the first stitch as if to purl, slip as if to purl, okay? So you're just gonna go in as if to purl and slip that off. Slip as if to purl and then simply purl your way back across that back needle. So we're purling because the we're knitting with the wrong side facing us and so we we want to make the right side of the fabric correctly. Okay? So just purl your way back across however many stitches that is for you. It should be your heel flap should be constructed with exactly half of your original cast on number whatever you did there. Okay, I'm nearing the end of my purl row, and I'm just gonna purl the last one just like normal. Okay, turn your work so that now you have the right side facing you again, and now we're going to begin again, but we are gonna slip the first stitch and alternate every other. So go in as if to purl, well, here's how I like, I like to do it. Keeping your yarn in the back, go in as if to purl. And then we're gonna knit the next one. Okay, slip as if to purl. Knit the next one. Slip as if to purl. Knit the next. Slip, knit, slip, knit, slip. Knit. Now the reason we're doing this, here let me show you on the back side, the reason that we're doing this is because, do you see how that makes, you're taking your working yarn across the back of the stitch that we've slipped rather than knitting it, and doing so creates some extra thickness on the fabric that will make that reinforced, kind of reinforced padded heel. So again, slip as if to knit, or sorry, slip as if to purl, my mistake there, I misspoke. Slip as if to purl, knit, and you're gonna do that all the way across, just alternating. And if you've cast on, it, well you should have an even number of stitches on your um, heel flap here, so that means you're gonna end with a knit stitch because you started with a slip. So being an even number, you'll end with a knit stitch and as before, we will knit into the back loop of the last one. And you'll that will become clear as to why once you see that it makes a nicer chain edge. So again, we're slipping and then, whoops, I've tucked, there we go. We're gonna knit into the back, knit into the back loop of that last one, okay? Then turn your work so that we're gonna purl across the inside of the heel flap that we're creating. So as you can tell, we're just going back and forth on this, this needle here that's in the back, which is the back of the heel, and we're just ignoring this for now. We're just ignoring those front instep, top of the foot stitches, okay? So slip the first stitch as if to purl, just take that off, and then you're gonna purl, just purl all the stitches back across to the beginning of your heel flap. You can particularly see here how there's the one we knitted, and you can see how that, see the bar there, how it skipped the one we slipped? 
but we're going to purl that. Because if we didn't, the next time we go to slip it, we would just be elongating it and stretching it up and up and up, and that's not going to work because you can only really do that for one row unless you intentionally make that stitch bigger. But that is a pattern for a different day. So we're just purling back across here. As we near the end, we're still purling, and we're just going to purl that last stitch as usual. Okay, turn your sock so that the right side is facing you again. Slip the first stitch as if to purl, and then knit, slip, knit, slip, knit. Again, I'll, you're just slipping as if to purl, knitting the next, slip as if to purl, knitting the next, and so forth all the way across. Okay, So let me do a few more rows, and then I'll show you uh, what the edge looks like and why we're knitting through the back loop as, as well as slipping um, the very first stitch and how that's going to end up being uh, advantageous for picking up the gusset stitches later. Now that I have a few rows of the heel flap done, I want you to, to see what that's starting to look like. Um, you can see the columns of the slip stitch as I bring them up and then you know slip the alternate rows there. So that's the stripey kind of column pattern that you'll see emerging there. And then I wanted to show you the um, chain stitch edge, how it, it kind of almost looks like a crochet chain that you've done across the top. And that's the effect of slipping that first stitch. And so for each one that we slip up to the next row, that is the equivalent of two rows of heel flap because we've slipped it up and knitted and then we've purled our way back across and then we've done that again. So each one of these, well not this first one because remember we just knitted that, but each one of these represents two rows of heel flap knitting. And so I like to count these and have these equal half the number of cast on stitches. Or you can also, you know, since you're figuring these are worth two rows, you're knitting the same number of rows as you have stitches going across. So for me, I have um, 36 across here, so I'd want to have 18 of these edge stitches. Or if you need to make your heel flap a little bit longer uh, because you have a high instep or a high arch, um, then maybe you want to do 20 or 22 in my case. Um, but you know, everybody's different. It depends how many stitches you've cast on. It depends on how, how tall you want your heel flap to be. So if you notice the, the heel flap here, okay, so this is the back of the heel flap and then this is the gusset stitches. And so how many stitches you pick up along the edge of the heel flap determines how many rows you have around the arch or the instep of your, you know, the diameter from the back of the heel here until the top. And so if this is a greater number for you, then you may want to make this more of a rectangle rather than a square. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, at the very least, you want to do the you know same number of rows of your heel flap as you have cast on stitches. So like I said, each of these chain stitches represents two rows of knitting. And so I'm going to continue on back and forth my, with my heel flap until I have uh, 20 or 22 probably. It depends on how it looks when I get there, and I'll decide that. All right, I've completed my heel flap, and um, I have 36 stitches on this needle. And so if I was following the standard formula, I would have done 18 chain edge stitches, which would have been 36 rows. But because my rows seem pretty fine, or I don't know, I, I, did I ended up doing 22. So I have 22 chain edge stitches that I can count along the side here. And you can see how that's going to make a nice edge for me to pick up later. In a few minutes after we complete the heel turn. So in order to do the heel turn, which just means we're going to knit the other direction. So if you look at the, the photograph here, we've been coming down like this and we're just going to turn the heel. We're going to do this part down here and then we're going to be able to knit the foot. So turning the heel with some short rows is just going to allow us to do that. And when I say short rows, don't, don't panic about that. It just means that we're not going to knit all the way across the needle before we turn our work and go back the other way. That's that's really all that means. So to start with, we're going to stay in our slip stitch pattern and we're going to knit to a point that is two stitches past the halfway. 
So for me, I have 36 here, so I'm going to go to 18, that's halfway, and then 2 past is 20. So I'm going to just slip one as if to purl, same as before, knit. I'm just going to keep in my same groove here and go to two stitches past the halfway point. And so for you, that might be, you know, if you're halfway is 16, then you're going to do this until you get to the 18th stitch and so forth. So, you know, however many you have, go to two past the center. Okay? I guess I should uh, count and keep track of what I'm doing instead of chatting about it. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 8, okay, 18, 19, 20. Now, at this point, I'm going to do a decrease, and I'm going to do this slip, slip, knit. So it's a left-leaning decrease, okay? So remember, we do that by slipping as if to knit, slipping as if to knit. So that's the slip, slip part. And then put your left needle underneath those both of those stitches and then knit them off, which is in effect knitting through the back loop of both of those. And doing that makes them lay flat and they kind of uh, turn up toward the sky there or the ceiling and it makes them lay flat. Now you're just going to knit one more after that, okay? And then turn your work. All right. Now we're going to slip the first stitch because... We need to get going and we don't want to we don't want to purl another stitch on top of that so just slip the first one and then purl five one two three four five now this is going to be true regardless of how many stitches you cast on okay then we're going to purl two together and that will make a right leaning decrease on the right side. So purl those two together and then purl one. Okay, now let's see if I've done this correctly. This will be the test. Now, see how when we uh, did our slip slip knit, it created a gap on this side. So I'm gonna count how many stitches I have on this, on the outside of the gap, between the gap and the end. And I'm gonna count how many stitches I have on this side from the, from the gap to the end. And hopefully they'll be the same. They are the same. I have 13 stitches on the outside of this and 13 stitches from the gap to the outside on this side. So that's awesome. Okay, so I just finished doing my purl two together and then I purled one. Now I'm gonna turn my work again and go back to the knit side where the right side is facing me, okay? And I'm gonna start the same way I always do where I'm gonna slip now, let me back up here a second. Okay, so I want to carry on my slip one, knit one pattern of re heel reinforcement. I want to carry that on around the heel turn, and then I want to do that for a while on the bottom of the heel because that's where I tend to wear my socks out more is on the bottom of my foot, not at the back of the heel. So I want to carry that on. Now, as we go through these decreases, and we're going to end up decreasing all these away and adding them to this center section, and we're going to do the same on this side. And periodically, we will have an odd number of stitches in the center section. So maybe our slip one, knit one doesn't exactly work out quite right. So I'm going to show you how I adjust for that. It's not going to be perfect, um, but it's not noticeable I well I don't think I don't necessarily inspect the heel of my own sock when I have it on but you'll see what I mean okay so you know you can see that these raised columns are the slip where we've slipped one on every alternating row so you can tell that like that's a slip stitch that's a knit and this first one's gonna be a slip so we're we know the first one will be a slip so we can do go ahead and do that slip as if to knit knit one slip one, knit one, slip one, and we're gonna carry on doing that until we get to the gap. So knit one, or sorry, that was a slip one. And now, instead of just knitting this one, I'm gonna do, the, do that where I slip it, and I'm gonna knit these two together like we did before. So slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, put your left needle underneath, and then knit that through the back loop. Okay, so that's our slip one knit one, but I'm gonna have to go ahead and knit this next one because I've just closed that gap. 
So most of the, so basically what I'm saying is you just do the best you can carrying on in that pattern. And now on the back side, the purl side, we're gonna slip one as if to purl and go ahead and purl your way across. When you get to one stitch before the gap, you're going to put your needle under that one and the next one to close the gap and purl those two stitches together. And then go ahead and purl one and turn your work. All right, now you can see where this might get a little bit off kilter because we've done our um, decrease there on the purl side or the wrong side. Now you need to just again take a look and you can see that this is a slip column here. So that's a slip stitch, that's a knit, that's a slip, that's a knit. So in this case, I'm not going to knit the first one still. I need to purl it so that, or sorry, I need to slip the first one always. But according to my pattern, it should have been a knit. So I'm going to go ahead. This is a slip, knit, slip. I'm going to go ahead and end up, I'm going to go ahead and end up knitting two of them together. Not together, sorry. Knitting two stitches. And then I'll get back to my correct pattern of slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one. So on your, you know, the kind of on the edges of your heel turn, it'll be a little bit wonky, um, but that's just the way it is because you have an odd number when you're occasionally doing this. So again, we need to close the gap by slipping as if to knit, slipping as if to knit, put your left needle there underneath, and knit that together through the back loop. Okay, and then knit one more. Turn your work. All right, wait for the camera to focus there. Slip as if to purl and purl your way across. So you're just gonna continue in this manner until you have all the, those 13 stitches on each side used up. Now, you might have had 11 stitches on each side or nine or five or whatever, depending on um, you know your gauge and how many stitches you cast on, and that varies depending on your individual socks math. So go ahead and purl to one before the gap and then purl two together to close the gap. Now this little formula um, of turning the heel, you know, where, where we knit across halfway, two stitches past the halfway mark and all that stuff that we did when we started this, that works regardless of how many heel stitches you have. So it's a kind of a good recipe, I guess, for, for doing this. So, all right, now we're back to the right side and we're gonna slip as if to purl, just like always. And you can tell from our columns, I look back toward the center where I can clearly see what the columns are. So that's a slip, knit, slip, knit. Okay, I slipped the first one. Now I'm gonna knit and I'm back on track. So every other time that you do this, you're gonna end up having to knit two two in a row um, before you get back to your you know slip one knit one pattern and that's not a crisis you're the boss of your knitting y'all know by now I have to say that at least once during a video right okay one before the gap and now we're gonna slip as if to knit slip as if to knit take your left needle underneath and knit it through the back loop okay knit one more and turn your work so continue with this. Um, hopefully that's clear about doing the, you know, carrying on with the slip one knit one pattern. Um, if you have questions about that, be sure to leave a comment either here or on the Facebook group or on the Ravelry group. Both of the links to those places are in the description below. So you're going to just carry on repeating these two rows, decreasing away the outside stitches by closing those gaps until you get to the outside edges. And that may or may not work out evenly. And what I mean by that is, you know how we do this and we knit two together, or sorry, purl two together, and then we have this one that we purl at the end. You may or may not have that one left over to do when you get to the very end. And if you don't, it's not a crisis, it's okay. Just purl two together and carry on. I'm about to finish up here, I'm on my last uh, knit 
side or right side knitting row for the heel turn. So I've just knitted that one. So I'm going to slip this one. And like I said, I'm not going to have enough stitches here at the end after I do my slip, slip, slip knit. There won't be one left to knit plain. But that's all right. No big deal. I just want to close the gap and do that final decrease and turn my work. And I'm going to purl my way back across um, just like we always have been. And the same thing will occur on that other side where I won't have one left over at the end to just purl a single single stitch at the end. I'll, I'll end up with a purl two together to close the gap. So I slip the first one as if to purl. Now I'm just going to go ahead and purl my way back. All right, now I'm at the last two stitches. I'm going to which is the gap and I'm going to purl those two together. And I have completed the heel turn. So that's our heel turn and you can see that we've carried on the reinforcement there through that. That's nice. I always feel like it's magical. You know, I've made this little sculpted area for my heel to sit. So our next step is going to be to pick up these side gusset stitches, join up with the instep or top of the foot stitches, pick up this other side here, and then begin knitting around and around and around again. And what I usually like to do is also carry out, carry on the slip one, knit one portion of this reinforcement. I like to have that further down the bottom of my foot. Here, let me show you with the photograph here. I like for, you know, we've done this part where we put the reinforcement right here, but I like it to carry on down to about here to where we're finished with our gusset. Um, and I'm going to show you how I prefer to do that. And then, you know, you can decide if you do or do not. So that'll be our next video. That'll be next time. Um, in the meantime, though, if you choose to carry on with this heel, bottom of the heel reinforcement, you're going to want some little stitch markers, whether that's the, um, you know, little tiny rubber bands, like the kind kids wear their braces, or, you know, specifically small diameter sock knitting stitch markers, whatever works best for you. You can even use little scraps of yarn, but you are going to want to make sure that this section of heel stitches, um, is designated separate and apart from all the stitches we're about to pick up here. So, good job, good work with that, and until next time, sloth knitters, go ahead and finish this up, and then if you've already started sock number two, go ahead and knit the heel flap and turn the heel on that one as well. Okay, so you've accomplished a lot this this time. We've you know knitted the heel flap, turned the heel, and that always feels really magical to me. Um, just because, you know, it starts looking like what it is. You know, it's not just a tube anymore. You've actually created some structure, and I think that's awesome. So that's always kind of exciting. No matter how many pairs of socks that I do, I, I just think it's fascinating. I get a little thrill about it every time. So until next time, um, carry on. Do your second one if you have enough needles. If not, go ahead and, you know, just work through that. And if you actually wanted to start your second socks, and you only had one set of needles, you could put this on a stitch holder or some waste scrap yarn. Do the same with your stitches here. And then go ahead and steal this needle and go ahead and cast on and start knitting sock number two while you're waiting until the next episode of our sloth series. Okay, as always, uh, like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment if you're so inclined join our Facebook group and or the Ravelry group where we have a lot of fun in there We have a lot of support. We have a lot of really encouraging people. So all right join me over there, too. All right knit on